go ahead and say it. Y'all help me sing a song this morning and then we gonna pray and preach. You want, you want me to pick it? No, I got that. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, O silent flock by night, behold, throughout the heaven there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born Amen Eternal God our Father thank you for this blessed day that you've given us thank you for the grace and mercy you've shown us these 365 days. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your love. Father, we ask forgiveness of our sins, of the cold hearted way we treated someone, the way we talked bad to someone and mistreated someone. We ask forgiveness, Father, of the sins that we've committed against you and against our fellow man. Father, we ask forgiveness. We pray for those amongst us who are sick and afflicted, those who are homebound. We pray for them this morning. Father, we pray for situations known and unknown and pray for your guidance and your direction. We pray for those in the midst of battles that we know nothing about. We pray for those who are on mountaintop experiences, they've come out of stress and strife. And Lord, we wanna thank you for bringing us to this point. Father, we pray that you will give guidance, give direction, give vision for 2024. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that we will be willing to hear and obey your direction that we might lift you up that we might magnify you in all that we do we ask this in the name of your darling son Jesus Christ amen, amen. our scripture text will come from Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 through 9 Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 through 9 now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of their foot treads I have given it to you just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and as far as the great sea forward, the setting of the sun 
will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Where do we go from here? I'm not sure if you do it or not, but every year I say that I'm going to do something different from what I did last year. I'm not sure if you do it or not, but I make some resolutions. I make some plans to do things differently from what I did the previous year. My plan is to eat healthier, exercise more, read more, study more, pray more, meditate more, be selfish about some of the things that I do. Where do we go from here? 15 years of service, 15 years of commitment, 15 years of sacrifice, 15 years of blessings. Where do we go from here? What would God want us to do? Where would God want us to go? As we stand before our Jordan River, as we stand before where God has placed us, the question burning within me is where do we as a people, as a church, as friends, as fellow laborers in this vineyard, where do we go from here? In the five books of Moses, we have a very full account of the rise and the advance and the movement of the Old Testament church. We see the family out of which it was raised. We see the promise, the great character by which it was incorporated, the miracles by which this Old Testament church was built upon. We also have a history of those early days of God's people. God led them out of Egyptian bondage that seemed to be the worst place that they could find themselves in. And over the course of time, God manifested himself to them in many different ways. The miracle of deliverance by the Red Sea. The miracle of deliverance from Pharaoh's armies. He made a covenant with them, beginning with their father Abraham, that he would bring them to a land that flowed with milk and honey. 
In Genesis chapter 15, in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. When Abraham was 99 years old, in Genesis chapter 17, he appeared unto him and he promised him, I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. God always keeps his promises. God's covenant was passed down from Isaac to Abraham. The promise was passed down from Jacob to his son Isaac. In the process of time, Isaac's son Joseph was sold into slavery into the land of Egypt by his jealous brothers. But God was working out a plan that he had for the children of Israel. One of those plans was the advancement of Joseph to a position of high authority within the Egyptian country. And while he was being moved up and higher and higher positions back in the in his homeland, they were going through a famine. And in a short story, after some time Joseph died, the children of Israel are in slavery, they are put under hardships because Pharaoh is afraid of all these people who continually multiplying all around him. And because of what God wanted put in place, Joseph was placed in a position to be a blessing to the children of Israel. But because of their unbelief, because of their rebellion, because they wouldn't follow God's directions, they made it to the promised land and had to wander around in the wilderness for 40 years. Yet, God was faithful. God was merciful. And in spite of all their murmuring and complaining, God was determined to keep his promise to his people. So now we come to this text. Today, Moses, the great leader, has died before he reached the promised land. He had disobeyed God and was only allowed to look over and see it, but he wasn't permitted to set foot on this new land. So a new time comes for the children of Israel. It's a new day on God's calendar. Yes, Moses is dead, but God's covenant was not dead. Moses, the great leader, the great mentor, was now in his grave, but God's covenant was not to be forgotten. I would imagine during their 30 days of mourning for Moses, that they had questions that came up in their mind. What are we going to do now that Moses is no longer here? What are we going to do now now that our leader who has led us through all of these things and blessed us and brought us to this place, what are we going to do now? They knew that Moses had prepared Joshua for the leadership position, but I still imagine there's apprehension, there's concern, there's worry about what is going to happen next. Joshua was not the successor like Moses in the sense that he was not a prophetic civil ruler, but he was a general. He was a soldier, and he was called to lead the children of Israel across the Jordan River. Where do we go from here? Verse 2 tells us God had the answer. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people into the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel of Israel. God in essence is saying arise, go and possess. Don't have any thoughts about going back 
to Egypt. Don't have any thoughts about looking back behind you at those things that you have overcome and you think that things are better for you in Egypt. Don't think about anything but arise, go, and possess. I have given it to you. I have set you up for success. I have put you in a position and I'm telling you that I'm going to keep my word. It was no time to think about trying something new. It was no time to give up and make the best of it all, but it was time to move forward. What about you this morning, True Vine Baptist Church? Where do we go from here? We're standing on the threshold of a new year. We're standing on the threshold of new opportunities to do God's work. Are we going to be content to just do the status quo? Are we going to be comfortable with how things stand in our present situation? Are we ready to give up and begin looking for greener pastors? Are we ready to go forward and possess what God has in store for us. The children of Israel had to make a decision and that decision was either to sit and mourn the passing of Moses and reminisce about the past or rise and go forward to possess God's promises. We're at a crossroads today. We're at the beginning of a brand new year, a brand new era that could be a part of what God has planned for us. God's been good to us. In spite of all our failures and shortcomings, we look over our past and it's easy to reminisce about those years that have gone by. We've had some great times. We've had growth. We've had times of victory, times of prosperity, and times of success. But we've also had times of difficulty and complexity. We've been disappointed in people, discouraged with circumstances, and at times considered the option to just give up. And it's your decision as it is Going, what is your decision going to be about your spiritual life? Are you content with where you are? Are you satisfied with your relationship with him? Are you content to continue living and doing with what you're doing right now? Joshua 8 tells us this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. It is our decision as a congregation as to where we're going concerning the spirituality of this church. In spite of all the difficulties and even successes that we've had in the past, we cannot superimpose our future to those circumstances. Today is a new day. Where are we going from here? We can't just sit around on our success and achievements and be content that our best is in the past. God has new things in store for you and this church. There are new horizons for us to conquer. God has a whole storehouse of blessings that he wants to bestow upon us. There are new areas of ministry God wants us to explore. There has never been a time in history when the church has such a great potential for reaching the lost. And I want to challenge you to make the decision to arise, go forward, and possess God's provisions 
for ministry. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When you go to witness, he's with you. When you go on your jobs, he's with you. When you go in your retirement days, he's with you. When you go through trials and tribulations, he's going to be with you. What can you do in 2024 and beyond that moves you closer to him that moves you closer to doing what he would have you to do what can all of us as a church do in 2024 and beyond we have so much potential there's been no greater time for the church to be a light to this world the door is open the way has been made and this is our hour let's move forward doing what God would want us to do. Let's begin by making a commitment to God to honor him, to be faithful to him, to live a holy and dedicated life, to possess a positive, optimistic, and encouraging attitude. Let's begin by working together as a congregation for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. Where are we going from here? Are we going to give up? Are we going to quit? Are we going to sit around and reminisce about the past? Are we going to allow the failures of our past to get in the way of our progression into the future? It's our decision. You're at the crossroads. A decision is needed now. Where are we going from here? I'm not talking about making New Year's resolutions. I'm not talking about making a commitment to yourself. I'm talking about making a commitment to go forward. Where am I going to be in my spiritual life by this time next year? How am I going to help this church go forward in winning souls for Jesus Christ? What steps am I going to take to be a blessing in my church and in my community? It's time for us to arise. It's time to make a decision now to do whatever it takes to win souls and be a blessing to those around us. God told Joshua, be strong and of good courage for unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate on it day and night. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong. Be of good courage. Don't be afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Whithersoever thou goest. Those promises to Joshua and the children of Israel. Are the same promises God gives to us arise go work and conquer arise get up move and do what God has commanded of us to do God wants this church to spiritually prosper God wants to make this church a blessing to this community God wants to use this church to reach the lost where are we going from here. When we move into 2024, where are we going from here? Lord, we thank you this morning that you've blessed us to be here. We thank you this morning for all who are present here this morning. 
We thank you for the challenge of where are we going from here to do what you have commanded of us. Go ye therefore unto all nations, teaching them to observe all things. And lo, you are with us always. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. amen. This morning, there may be one here this morning who is challenged by the message of where you're gonna go, what you're gonna do from this day forward in your relationship with God. He's challenged us to arise, go, and possess the land. The land are those people who don't know him. The land is those people who have no relationship with him. The land is those who need a savior. And we are challenged to go teach, go witness, to go lead them to the savior that we come Sunday after Sunday claiming a relationship with him. We must be about God's business. There may be one who has backslidden and fallen by the wayside who would like to change their relationship with God. There may be one who doesn't know him in the pardon of their sins and you can get to know all about him. There may be one who is in the midst of trials and tribulations or one who has a testimony of God's greatness. You may come at this time. We've done as the Lord has commanded. There will always be room in our Father's kingdom. This time we prepare to receive our tithes and offering. Will a man?